What's happening, Feast and Friends, and welcome to another episode. Getting behind the airbrush again tonight, and we're going to do a pattern that, well, you can't find in stores. Little black, little pink, little purple. It's definitely unusual, but it was a request that I got from a buddy. So, enough yapping. Let's, let's go talk about it. All right, so to get started tonight, I need a blank. So this is a little 1.5 size, so it's a little bit smaller than oh, something like this. 2.5 is what you've seen me working on lately. So you can see there the size difference, 2.5 versus a 1.5. I know a lot of people are a little bit more comfortable throwing the smaller 1.5, so that's what we're going to paint on tonight. Now tonight's pattern that we're trying to replicate is pretty flashy. A lot of different, you know, cool looking colors in that, but to actually make the crank, it's pretty simple. We're going to go with an opaque black. I'm going to use a grape to transition down into that. And the bottom colors are going to be opaque purple and fluorescent hot pink. Now I've noticed when I'm using a lace type thing like this to cover these and get these patterns on this, I have been having better luck. I've been using opaque white as my primer, but I got some balancing clear. It's supposed to help it stick a little bit more and it does seem like that has been doing the job. But I've also been using some thousand grit sandpaper and just lightly going over that blank before I put any paint on it. So let's go ahead and get the base colors down on this first. I'm gonna do kind of a half and half. So the fluorescent pink up on top. On the bottom, I'm gonna go with that kind of lighter purple. So uh, let's get gloved up and start. Hmm, that's not ideal. And take two. That's better. A few drops of that. Can't miss that color. Ooh, that's more than a few. All right, make sure the cleaner's out of there. Let's go ahead and get a coat of this on. Start light. Build that color up. You can see it going on there. Looking good. It's kind of hard trying to differentiate that background. I think kind of messes with it a little bit, but Build the colors up. It's uh, up to you how bright you want to go. I'm going to kind of use that lateral line right there in the middle to be my judge. I'm going to try to stay up above that with all my pink. I'm going to get this pink pretty bright. Keep making some paths of this, and we'll come back once I got this all covered to where uh, I'm happy with it. You can see there how it's starting to brighten up. That's what we want. All right, there we go. Got a good coat of that on there. And boy, this camera does not do it justice. This is, I mean, this stuff is bright, hot, crazy pink. Doesn't look that bright there, but uh, it's it's definitely bright. Let's change this color out. Let's get the, uh, what was this? Opaque purple, kind of a lighter purple. We'll get that and kind of fade that in right about where that midline is and then cover the bottom of this all in purple. Okay, let's get some purple in here. And again, remember these are gonna be my bottom layers. So these are the colors that are gonna show up after I put that stencilish, foily type stuff on there. Lace-ish, I don't know, whatever you wanna call it. My bottom colors that are gonna be showing through. So that pink up top, and then kind of that light purple there on the bottom, those are the colors that are gonna be showing through because they're on the bottom. So let's get this put on. Ooh, turn that pressure down. Even strokes, sometimes I have to remind myself of that. Even strokes, Debo, you don't want it to all ball up. Even strokes of this, let's get the bottom covered. Don't wanna to go too dark with it. I'm gonna have a dark purple over the top of it. I want the light purple here to contrast against the darker purple that I'm gonna put over the top of it. So I'm gonna stay pretty light with this. I wanna kinda, so I've kind of got that line in the middle. Boy, these fluorescent colors are kind of hard to pick up, but right there, just under that lateral line, I've kind of got a white line there. I'm gonna try to kind of blend these two up in so there's not that line. There we go, I'm pretty happy with that. Man, this just does not do it justice. That is hot, hot, very bright pink on there. Bottom is kind of a lighter purple. So I like the way those two look. So those are gonna be our bottom layers. Let's heat set that and then we'll get our, uh, our wrap on it. That just means I'm trying to get all this paint good and dry. If you have wet paint on here and you try to put this lacy covering stuff over it, you're just gonna smear it and rip this and it's gonna show the white stuff beneath there, you know, that primer. So you wanna make sure this is good and dry. You know, if you wanted to be safe, you could even leave it uh, overnight till the next day, but let's get this lace stuff on. All right, so this is the lace I've been using. This is already kind of contoured a little bit to these cranks. So I'm just gonna make sure I pull this tight. You wanna make sure your pattern, this, this lace stuff is pulled real tight down on it. I might even wanna get some new, I see this is, I've had a number of layers of different paint on this and it's kinda of getting hard, almost crunchy up top. It's not real soft. Got this other one I started the other night. I was doing a bluegill pattern. Maybe this is something I'll show you. In a different video, but just kind of a fun new different bluegill pattern. Looks like it's got some veins through it. A little bit of uh, iridescence on it. Iridescent purple there in the back and white. Kind of a cool one. Ain't gonna be thick enough. I can't really pull that tight. I think that'll work. That's what you want. And good and tight like that so you can't see any gaps underneath it. The tighter you can get, the stronger that pattern is going to be on the bottom. Okay, I also got some of these little bit larger rubber clips so it's not metal teeth grabbing on that. I think this has helped too. So I've made a few adjustments to try to kind of help so I don't grind the bottom of those blanks completely off when I use these lace-ish type deals. That is the technical term, lace-ish type deals. 
You can tell I didn't major in English, but that actually looks pretty good. I think the way that's held on is gonna work. So I'm gonna put that in here. Now to make this a little deeper and make the other colors that I'm putting over it stand out, I'm gonna put a layer of white over this, try to trap that pink and purple underneath all the spots wherever there's webbing touching. I want that to keep as is, keep those hot colors underneath there, and we'll get to covering the top of that. Now this is a pretty easy pattern, pretty easy to do. It looks pretty complicated, but once you get it down and understand, you know, the kind of the steps of doing it, it's not hard at all. And I have to give a big shout out to Jen over at Jekyll Bates. Her videos have been so helpful, and that is a lot of pressure. Her videos have been so helpful as a beginner. She does some awesome tutorials over there. If you're looking to get into airbrushing, make sure you check out her YouTube channel, Jen over at Jekyll Bates, Jekyll Productions, I think she changed it to. I know she's probably never watched one of mine. Hopefully maybe one day she will, I'd be honored, but she is an awesome teacher and makes great videos for beginners if you're looking to get into airbrushing. So I highly recommend you check her out. I'm gonna get this all covered with some opaque white and you can see what I'm doing there. Layering that opaque white over the top of it. Get a good color on this. And I'm not really concerned about getting the very belly of it. I can always use some of that light purple to touch it up. But for right now, I just wanna get as much of this covered in opaque white as I can. All right, I got the white layer over that, and the purpose of that white layer is to make whatever color I'm putting over the top of this be brighter and more vibrant. If I just left that purple and that, that pink and tried to put other colors over it, they're gonna kind of blend. You don't get as bright of, of whatever color you're putting on there. So for me, in this case, we're gonna do some black on the top and then do some purple on the bottom, kind of blend those together as we go through, and it's gonna give us a pretty cool lightning crackle looking effect when we take that off there. So get some uh, some purple and black loaded up here. I'm just gonna do the purple first, I think. Throw the black in after that. This is some grape, actually, not purple. Okay, got my pressure turned down. I'm gonna put this dark purple right about where we were talking about before, right about that center line. Want that to be a real dark purple contrasting up against kind of that lighter purple underneath there. There we go, I like the looks of that. Good deep purple, let's get some black loaded in this. And that's really thick, that opaque black in there is really thick, so I'm gonna put a little bit of reducer in there just to make it a little bit thinner and make it a little easier to spray out. I had to steal a paintbrush from my youngest. Sorry, honey, grown-up things need to be done here. All right, got a good flow of that black in there now, so let's go ahead and cover all this. I'm going to start at the top, work my way down the sides, get a good dark black cover. Yeah, look at that going on. I'm going to kind of spray some of that black so it angles down on there, merges kind of into that purple. Check my sides. For me, that's been one thing that's really hard is to make sure I'm even on both sides with my color. Gonna try to use kind of the eye as a line here to guide me. All right, I think that looks pretty awesome. Did I just say pretty awesome? I'm tired, you have to excuse me. All right, heat set again. Apply the heat to it, get all this dry, and then we'll open this little present up. Did I do my job correctly? Slowly take these off, kind of stick into that paint. All right, let's take this baby and peel that back. Oh yeah, I can see some hot pink. Make sure that's good and dry, yes. Look at that, that's what we wanna see. Black back, and that's all right. I didn't mean to get the, the front of that or anything there because I'm going to cover that up with black, but look at that. Man, and this camera does not do it justice. That is bright, hot pink. Right up next against that black, it stands out extremely well. They contrast very nicely. Now, the, see, the bottom's nice. Had a couple spots there where it's still peeled off, and that has been... That has been the bane of my existence with this stuff, but that's okay on the bottom there. I can touch it up with a little bit of that light purple. It's not a huge deal, but... Gosh, I don't know, I have not been able to perfect that. And this one I'm gonna call the Potter Shab, my guy Matt Potter, I came up with this idea from him. Uh, he wanted a crankbait and I said, what colors do you want? He said, I don't know, do something that's like pink, purple, and black, I don't have anything that color. So I tried to think what I could do and make those contrast and look nice against each other and this came out looking pretty cool. You can see there, white purple up against that dark purple, hot pink up against that black. The Potter Shad is what I'm gonna call it. Matt, thanks for the idea, this turned out pretty wicked. Just get a light black layer over this. I'm going to leave actually some of that pink there. I think that looks kind of cool on the nose. So I'm going to hit this kind of at an angle this way. There we go. Just to blacken up that eye. There we go. I want to darken all around that eye. Gives it kind of a cool eye socket looking deal. Same thing on that side, darken the eye. I want to leave all that bright pink. And I'm going to leave that nose, what do you think? 
Leave it pink? Yeah, why not? Leave the nose pink. Okay, so I'm gonna load some of this, uh, what was it, opaque purple in here again. And I'm gonna kind of feather this in and try to cover up that little scratch a little bit. It's gonna look like this fish, I don't know, maybe got a bad tattoo and then tried to have it covered up. That way that back you can barely tell, but that back's gonna stay just a little bit lighter. There we go, got that covered up. Did a couple coats of that on here, you can't even tell it was there. Done. Oh, I got a big old box of eyes here. All kinds of eyes that I've been purchasing and adding to the collection. We're gonna go with these, some pink. This part always makes me nervous. I don't have the steadiest of hands. I'm always scared I'm gonna dip super glue all over this and get it all over the face and ruin all the bait that I just did. Glove I don't need anymore. I've been kind of saving my gloves to make them go longer instead of just doing one and throwing it away. When I just do a session where I paint a couple, I take it off and save it. Hashtag frugal Debo tip of the day. All right, and again, get the old super glue gel out. This is some Loctite super glue gel. I like the gel, the stuff doesn't run as much. Just like that. Grab the X-Acto knife. I like these colors that are solid because you can't screw them up by putting them on the wrong way. This takes a size five millimeter eye. There we go, one pink eye on. Flip it around, do the same thing on the other side over here. Little drop of glue. Put the cap on again, uh, pro tip, the, uh, the super glue that dries out is not as good as the wet stuff. Use the knife, grab another, how's that even happening? It's like some Cirque du Soleil stuff there. There we go. Perfect, and there it is. Got some pink eyes for it, some pink gemstone looking eyes. Bling that baby up looking nice. There you go, what do you think of that? Gives it the old crackle veined effect. And this is what I've done on a few others I'll show you here. Oh, this guy I did the other day, that I call the albino shad. Red with black eyes, so again it's got the veining on top. Turned out looking pretty neat. Did kind of the opposite on the bottom with the red. So it's got the red on red, I like that one. Like I showed you that bluegill I did the other night. This is on one of those S crank, mega bass looking crank deals. Kind of supposed to look like a light bluegill sunfish type deal. Kept the colors pretty light on it. Used a lot of pearls, so you can see here when that gets in the sun, man, that pearl, like it almost looks white. And then you turn it, you can see all those colors. Got some iridescence mixed in there. You can't really see it on camera, but that tail back there where you can see that looks kind of different is all like iridescent purple. So when I'm looking at it, turn it certain ways, it's like a bright purple. So that dude turned out pretty neat. I like that uh, bluegill with the veining in it. And that's one I could show you. Comment below and let me know if you'd like to see that. All right, fish and friends, there you have it. All finished up with, well, you might want to see that one sometime, but that's not what we painted. That's what we finished up tonight. The finished product turned out pretty darn well, if you ask me. Pink highlights, black top, couple different colors of purple there. Finished it off with the pink eyes. I will need to get this finished, get this tape off of it, and get it finished like this guy here. I did get my finishing uh, station kind of fixed up, not the way I exactly want it to use the other stuff, but at least something for now to get these finished. But I need help from you all. Comment below and let me know, do you want to see this in like a different color? Do you want to see a whole different pattern, kind of the new bluegill pattern that I did and finished up? Maybe something completely off the wall and different. Let me know. Let me know if you want to see a traditional color, something weird and crazy. Comment below and let me know. I appreciate the input. Now tonight, subscribe, fish and friend. Shout out goes to my man, Mark F. Mark, thanks for always watching. I appreciate you commenting down below as well. But again, that's it for me tonight. I hope you all enjoyed. It's late. I got to get to bed. So thank you all for watching. Until next time.